Hello everyone. Welcome to I Exam B and I have a very special guest with us today, Mr. Sanjay Navin Govan, who is the ex DGM at SIDB. Uh, he uh, joined SIDB in 1999 almost at the inception of SIDB and has served there for almost 25 years and retired in 2016. Sir currently is heading as MD and CEO of an NBFC Kanika Investment Limited uh, an NBFC which specializes in financing for small businesses and uh, you know uh, supply chain operations so uh, huge experience in the finance space specifically MSME both with SIDB and in the private se- sector today uh, thank you so much sir uh, for joining us today and taking out time and a very warm welcome to our example platform Thank you, Prachi. Thank you for having me here, and it's a it's my pleasure to be associated with you, you and your team. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, uh, sir, we have um, you know a lot of questions come up from students and aspirants as Sidbi has again come out with Grade A recruitment cycle this year. Uh, the application window is still open till twenty eighth. They can apply, and uh, a few changes have come in because of which students are rethinking. So, we will like to discuss your views related to it. plus also about your experience and your knowledge about the msme sector and specifically working with sidb so to sh- start and shoot away the first question so your experience of working at sidb and how you have seen sidb playing an important role in bringing up the msme sector in our country so two things first uh, i joined in 1991 not in 1999 Okay. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, it. and I took voluntary retirement in 2016. At the age of 49, I left Sidbi. Sidbi has played a very important role, uh, not in not only in MSME sector, but as a person, I can tell you, whatever I am today, uh, professionally and personally, lot of credit goes to Sidbi. Sidbi has shaped my career. because i when i joined i was hardly 23 24 years old uh, and amongst the first batch of directly recruited officers of sidbi uh, so and and the type of grooming that i've got was very fortunate god has been very kind and sidbi has been very gracious that uh, i've got the best type of exposure and experience in sidbi working across the country and uh, across the departments across the various verticals the activity that sidbi does and which has helped me become not only professionally a good uh, professional but also a good human being that is also very important very very important uh so first i'll just uh, in a brief nutshell i'll tell you about my journey in sidbi mm-hmm. maybe 5 minutes and then i can talk about sidbi's role in development of msme sector and my profile As I mentioned, I had joined in 1991, and I joined in Kochi. Uh, that time it was called Kochi. Now it is Kochi yes. uh, in uh, in Kerala. And being from uh, North India, I belong to UP. Being from North India, it was a big challenge for me uh, to go and take up an, a job uh, somewhere down south. It was almost like a foreign country for me. But having said that, that was the only hindrance I faced for the first time. But when I went there, and when I uh, Met the people there, joined the organization. It completely changed my outlook. And I worked there in Pochin for four and a half years, and probably those were the best years of my life uh, in career. Then uh, I worked in Lucknow, Bombay, Mumbai, Ludhiana, uh, Dehradun, Lucknow again, and then Delhi. Delhi was my last posting. I was in charge of Delhi branch office in Delhi. Uh, before i took a plunge in private sector so in a career of almost 24 plus years uh, nearly 25 years i have worked at at least 6 7 centers so you can say that there have been transfers very frequently uh, so that becomes uh, it's a mental challenge uh, so if you are mentally prepared for being uh, transferred uh, frequently uh, that's okay i mean bank takes care of your needs your requirements on transfer and it gives you an opportunity to see your country first of all yeah every nook and corner of this country is different and so is the need of msme sector the msme sector in ernakulam in cochin and the msme sector in ludhiana 
or the MSME sector in uh, Uttarakhand is extremely different or in Noida or anywhere else in the country. So it gives a very good opportunity for people to spread their wings, to spread their outlook, go to different places, learn different things about the country, about the MSME uh, clusters in those various areas and develop themselves. That's how I have taken it. And uh, when you you have a family, so sometimes when children are small, it becomes sometimes of a challenge, but then there are ways and means of overcoming it. And having said that, just to give uh, some sort of a comfort to people, to youngsters who are joining or who are the party, uh, who are the candidates, in bigger areas, in bigger centers like Mumbai, Delhi, and Lucknow, uh, or Chennai, uh, you can stay at a center for a fairly longer period as compared to a smaller center like Ludhiana or Dehradun. Okay. So, while every four to five years, you should be mentally prepared for a transfer. But uh, in when you are in a bigger center, which everybody would have a chance in, in his career to be in a bigger center at least once or twice. So, there you can spend a slightly longer period also. The bank has a policy of transferring the news. Now, this is about my personal uh, thing, but as an organization, SIDBI is the apex financial institution, uh, development financial institution for development of MSMEs. It, it, it was initially a department of IDBI. Hmm. IDBI, the Industrial Development Bank of India, not the IDBI bank that we see right. today. Uh, the development financial institution, IDBI, and it had a small department called SIDF, Small Industries Development Fund. And that department used to take care of the funding requirement of SSIs. That time it was known as Small Scale Industries, SSI, which later was uh, converted into MSME, Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, thereby including micro and medium also in the gamut as also in addition to industry, the service sector enterprises were also included in the definition where uh, CDB was uh, supposed to extend development support. So, uh, the area of CDB's jurisdiction expanded multifold from SSI, small scale industry alone, to micro, small and medium industry and enterprise. That's how CDB uh, started. And Sidbi had been pioneering in many activities, many products that were not heard of in the banking sector. As we grow, as, as we talk further also in subsequent sessions, we can talk about multiple products that the banking sector was not aware, mm -hmm. were made known to the market, were tested by Sidbi. Once it was tested and was successful, it was replicated and accepted by the banking sector as a whole for the MSME sector, both for MSME and for my so We can talk at length subsequently in, uh, in subsequent uh, sessions when we have time. Absolutely. So maybe we can get, as you said, subsequently we can talk in more detail. But for an example, if you would like to give one such uh, product's name that was tested and brought in. Like I'll tell you the uh, rating for MSMEs. As you know, uh, the, uh, the rating, the credit rating, uh, there are some four or five accredited RBI accredited credit rating agencies right. who do uh, rating for large corporate sector. But there was no third party rating agency for exclusively for MSMEs. So this is one product which was pioneered by SIDBI, introduced by SIDBI, tested by SIDBI. It was shown as a successful uh, model and the entire banking sector has accepted it. Mera, SME rating agency, which is now uh, known as Akwete uh, yeah. rating agency. So this is one such product. And there are many such yeah. products. Yeah, I see them venturing into the venture capital funds also, promoting Absolutely. them and supporting not just through debt, but equity now uh, yeah. to the MSME sector. So absolutely, they are doing uh, commendable work uh, in this uh, area. Uh, sir, uh, you know, uh, in your introduction and with your experience with SIDBI, 
uh, you've already covered so much in detail about the transfer policy so all those who are listening i will skip that question later on to discuss because sir has so beautifully and so candidly told both the aspects of uh, the transfer policy and how one should you know uh, take it up with both arms uh, because it has its own benefits and knowing your own country forget about you know foreign or anything uh, and because just to continue on this aspect that i'm bringing this question up front uh, in the beginning uh, you know when we talking about the perks and benefits one another thing that comes to students mind and aspirants mind is related to foreign postings possibilities or any foreign education possibilities that can be uh, availed of while working at sibbi so uh, okay currently there is no uh, sibbi has no foreign offices yeah so we do not have any foreign postings as such but uh, there are a lot of uh, assignments uh, where sibbi participates with other governments foreign governments or their development banks or their central banks where uh, sibbi provides consultancy services to such organizations there uh, the experts of sibbi are uh, posted temporarily uh, to such countries for for that assignment so that could be one area of foreign exposure and the other area is that the staff of sibbi also gets an opportunity for foreign trainings so uh, the best of the training institutes that you can think of uh, in a world over uh, sibbi staff is sent there for uh, 10 days be 15 days even one month training program so in a career uh, um, a good officer can aspire to have two three foreign trainings also i have i have been fortunate to have at least five or six foreign trainings and at least one foreign assignment so great so uh, basically i in a nutshell i will just tell aspirants that you know uh, there's no dearth of opportunities you have to work hard and you know make yourself the best to be able to become uh, you know chosen for those opportunities absolutely and it is not it is not available to everybody i mean yes. you have to as you rightly said you have to work hard you have to prove your metal you have to become an expert in certain areas where your need is felt yeah that's that's about it yeah good good Uh, so i'll i'll talk about a little bit about the work profile and the departments at sibbi um the cs specifically in the notification for the sibbi grade a uh, the profile has been mentioned and certain areas uh, they have mentioned say for example they have mentioned that a grade a officer would be expected to help in augmenting credit penetration in msme and the microfinance uh, they will be expected to contribute in entrepreneurship promotion and skill development activities uh, they would be expected to be key input providers in business analytics and decision making uh, related to you know helping bringing up the msme sectors and the microfinance and also participate in internal management and administration control and monitoring related functions or any other areas that sibbi uh, feels is relevant so what exactly is this telling about the job profile and how do various departments work uh, in sibbi what i heard from you prachi this ex- this covers the entire gamut of activities that the bank undertakes okay uh, whether it is credit finance refinance re- uh, finance is also categorized into two parts in mm-hmm. sibbi one is direct finance and the other is through uh, refinance agencies like banks sfcs or nbfcs finance then there is a promotional development activities mm-hmm. where uh, sibbi undertakes lot of promotional development activities that is how sibbi is different from other commercial banks right. because we do take uh, a lot of development activities and promotional activities. then then there are other areas like internal controls like audit mm-hmm. administration hr so the four points that you mentioned cover the entire gamut of banking act and so, and uh, to to give you some sense uh, i think your your candidates should also be aware that this is the base level uh, officers in sibbi mm-hmm. the assistant manager and uh, sibbi is mostly an officer oriented organization so unlike some commercial banks or state financial corporations where you 
have been you would see lot of clerical and support staff mm-hmm. 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 out of um, if you are there are 10 clerical staff you will have one or two officers but it's not like that in sidbi sidbi is more officer oriented there is very few class 3 and class 4 staff so assistant managers are the class 1 officers base level assistant manager ke baad they become managers after managers they become assistant general managers agm and that is the first level of supervisory uh, position in city after assistant general manager there are deputy general managers general managers and chief general managers. and beyond that there is board position deputy managing director and chairman and managing director So the officers who are who will be joining should be like I joined as an assistant manager grade A. We are at the uh, bottom of the uh, class one officer. Okay. So one should be mentally prepared to take up any and every assignment or responsibility that is given. So, uh, so all these, like you mentioned, this is the entire. Uh, gamut of work that the bank is doing that is mentioned. So, if I have to understand this, you know, department wise, right, what would be the key departments that are there uh, in Sydney? So, as I said, di- there will be a direct credit vertical. Yeah. Direct credit means the vertical which is taking care of that di- giving credit directly to MSMEs. Mm-hmm. There will be an indirect credit vertical. Then the names may be changed. The nomenclature may keep on changing. but there will be an indirect credit vertical where the credit is given in bulk to uh, banks state financial corporations nbfcs mfis for further on lending to microfinance clients or msme clients then there will be a venture debt or equity right uh, uh, vertical where there are specialized people who only take care of um, equity and equity related products for uh, msme for larger msmes there'll be uh, there'll be a microfinance department uh, there'll be a promotion and development activities promotion and development activities is one of the biggest uh, activities of sidbi so there'll be cluster development there'll be entrepreneurship development all these would form under one uh, department there'll be an international consultancy organization also as i mentioned earlier uh, then there'll be an administration department there'll be an hr there'll be an audit department Okay. There'll be an accounts. There's an accounts department also. There's a resources management department, department. treasury, which manages the okay. treasury operations of the bank. So okay. largely, these are some eight to ten uh, departments. And in Sydney, the best part is that every officer, if he is willing to accept responsibility, he gets exposure in at least three, four areas in the initial five, six years. Wow, so that's the best part of it. Right. So then, then the management can. Take uh, take a call. These are the people who are best suited for these sort of activities, and then they are groomed in those departments, and then they head those departments. Wow, so that that's pretty quick, I would say. You know, three four departments in four five years, yeah. six years. That's a pretty good exposure uh, yeah. to get. Right. Uh, so, just one question came to my mind when you talk, were talking about the direct uh, finance department. So, is there a, a client facing branches that Sidbi has for this particular department? Yeah, so Sidbi has uh, Sidbi uh, Sidbi has a head office in uh, Lucknow. Lucknow. They have head office uh, departments in Mumbai and some head office department in Delhi. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, besides that, they have some ten or eleven regional offices and around eighty to ninety branches spread across the countries. They are largely in the bigger centers, uh, but some of the branches would be in uh, MSME clusters also, and those. branches would take care of all the needs of the uh, msme in their jurisdiction so they will the branch would take care of direct credit also the branch would take of indirect credit also the branch would take the uh, take care of promotional development activities uh, microfinance everything so they will be the eyes and ears and hand limbs of these uh, sidbi corporate office department so branches get to work everything Okay. So the staffing, the officers in branches. When I said that you may get an exposure of three, four areas in the first five, six, seven years, because when you are in a branch, you will be in one department, but after two, three years, you shift it to another area. Suppose okay. you are working in a direct credit vertical. After two years, you could shift, you could shift it to an accounts department in okay. the branch. Okay. 
right or looking after microfinance within the bank so that's how you get to develop expertise in multiple areas and then there will be some people who be posted in head offices also right. in mean, the first posting could be at head office also, some of them not all but uh, some of them could be in head office and the people who work in branches once they get expertise so either they will be an expert in branch management after 5 6 years or they will become an expert in one area where they will be handed and put in corporate office department or head office department okay so i think a very good experience that way is you know like you said in that particular area you will be responsible for the entire cluster or region so that's a good exposure um, to get at the big thing um so this year a little different in terms of eligibility has been the selection uh, the recruitment cycle that has been mentioned that uh, they've asked for experience before this they had never asked for experience it was only based on the educational qualification and then the entire selection process this year uh, experience of either two years uh, related to lending uh, in bank or three years in an nbfc again lending related in a non individual kind of lending experience has been asked for so what exactly is the reason and uh, uh, for going for such experience uh, See, uh, in, in your opinion again it is my my thought my assessment that should be in great hurry to have these people on board so if i remember correctly uh, in 2022 july also they had gone for the recruitment Yeah, in fact, twenty-two. They uh, recruited twice. Once at the twice, beginning of the year, once, and then towards and then, the end huh. of end so, of the. So, and that was <laughs> they recruited around hundred candidates. If I remember, ninety yes, to hundred yes. candidates. Yes. Yeah. So it and seems, yeah. though I'm not in, I'm not in this system. Now, but uh, what I understand is that Sydney is expanding fast. They are in dire need of experienced hands. They are in need of people who can hit the ground running. right with with and who have the basic understanding of the msme sector the msme sector has its own peculiarities mm-hmm. i would not say challenges but the peculiarities assigned i mean attached to msme sector so sydney i feel i personally feel again it's my opinion that they are in a great hurry to have these people on board as fast as possible and people with whom they need minimum hand holding to start Right. So that's my opinion. That's my understanding based on what has been, uh, what I've seen in the advertisement. That, that that makes sense, and which also, uh, you know, what I feel about that when you state this is that that shows that there's good growth opportunity in the organization for people who are joining. You know, last year also Absolutely. who joined, and this year who are joining. So. Uh, one should also take those in mind many times you know uh, we we have and this is for the benefit of the candidates we sometimes look at recruitment cycles and notifications with a very short eye view that you know uh, this is the salary let me get through this is uh, what i am getting but we 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 should also try to understand organizations what their growth plans are and where we could fit in because sometimes even getting at the right time <laughs> at the right place is also so much uh, important an opportunity to find uh, be a part of a particular growing organization at the right time so um, i think uh, that's also one thing that the candidate should definitely look at uh, with all these changes and not just look at it negatively because many times the first reaction is now they are asking for uh, you know experience and uh, what should we do so follow up question that falls out from this is so students some of those candidates are now in a fix if they are already working in a bank or in if they are working in an nbfc should they go for sidb or should they continue to work in that particular bank or nbfc it's a very personal decision very personal choice they have to look at two three aspects <laughs> which type of bank or or nbfc they are working in currently mm-hmm. what sort of job profile they have Which geographical area they are working in? They might be posted in some remote places. Mm-hmm. Banks have postings in very remote places, and the initial year they will do only cashier's job. Even as an officer, they will do only check signing, and they have to take a call. And financially also, so they have to take a take a very uh, conscious decision, informed decision. What is their current emoluments in the bank or an NBFC? What is the emoluments that should be off? that is one second what sort of profile they are currently into and whether they are happy with it or they would like to shift 
and the re- and the particular geographical location they are targeting. As far as job prospects are concerned, that much I can tell you that the prospects of career growth in Sydney is far far more superior than any other banks. I cannot comment about NBFCs because NBFCs there are many types of NBFCs. I'm currently working in a, with an NBFC, so I understand there are multiple types of NBFCs. But in banks, career options are uh, slightly limited, mostly because after this uh, mergers. A lot of banks are being merged, so there will be excess staffing. Uh, it's it's a personal uh, choice that they can make depending on where they are and Absolutely. what kind of profile they are uh, they are getting. Yes, yeah. it's a very personal choice. It's a very personal choice, and three four criteria one has to see and evaluate and then take a call. Absolutely, and you know I'll just highlight one aspect over here that you know. Um, getting experience in even different kind of areas and different type of organizations does has its benefits like you know even here uh, it's not like they've asked for an experience only in the government banks or uh, specifically nbfcs they've asked for you know if you have experience in any kind of nbfc any kind of banks which can help you so it is very very important that we look at different opportunities that are available and keep taking them up and keep deciding uh, you know we have that benefit today that uh, the opportunities are immense both in the government and the private space so i example also has started now helping with placements in the private space also Um, so because it's important we we are seeing so many government organizations also now asking for experience which is not specifically only in the government uh, space so uh, it's important that is as i sir, sir said there are few points that you should evaluate and then take that personal call where you want to uh, keep growing and taking up the opportunities so i'll also like to uh, talk about the selection process a little bit like the ceo as of now uh, they're not going for the written exam they will first pre-screen the applications uh, go for a psychometric test and then go for a gd gd sorry and an interview stage so what exactly is being uh, according to you any kind of things particularly being looked at at the pre-screening of applications level uh, and what are they uh, trying to test in the psychometric test so pre-screening level uh, would be simply to and it had to evaluate whether the candidate possesses the qualification and experience that have been mentioned in the advertisement no other screening okay no other thing so it's just no a other thing. simple thing no, no. they are okay. not doing any any um, value added screening at this point in okay. time it is okay. just like agar 3 saal ka experience hai to us bacche ka 3 saal ka hai ya nahi hai mm-hmm. as simple as that Okay. and and they would have mentioned some cut off dates and all mm-hmm. just to see whether the criteria are being fulfilled okay that that would be pre screening stage and the psychometric test again it's a very it will be an online test as i as i know uh for the short duration of 20 minutes or 30 minutes and there they are just checking the personality just evaluating the personality traits of individual candidates again there can be no right or wrong personality hmm there would be some aggressive leaders there would be team players there would be some personalities who are very systematic methodical who have an eye for detail mm-hmm. uh, there could be some some people who can work in a very structured environment mm mm-hmm. there could be some who who have that entrepreneurial trait right hmm. so and one more thing the candidate should not make any effort to hide their real traits but they'll be caught so whatever comes naturally to you in the personality test in uh, in this psychometric analysis test whatever comes naturally first instance may whatever comes to you you should answer that because there'll be questions there'll be situations who would take care of your manipulation if you try to manipulate things mm-hmm. you will be caught because there will be multiple questions and different situations which can cross check your answers and your traits and again i am telling you at the cost of repetition there is no right or wrong personality it is only the type of personality that would emerge and uh, i don't think it has any marking to it when when it goes to the interview or gd panel your personality traits would be available to them that's it and that may help 
in asking questions by the interviewer and in GD also, and could also play a role in your posting when you get there. That's that very very important. I hope everybody has paid attention. If not, please go back and listen to this again. You don't have to really prepare. You, they're just trying to assess your personality so that they can give you the best kind of suitable role in the organization if you get selected. So uh, that's a very very important point, sir. So moving to the actual selection process through GD and uh, interview. What kind of topics? What kind of areas uh, should a candidate be preparing for for their GD round? So this year, because it is slightly different from the previous year, they have asked for people with specific experience in MSME. So there is a very strong possibility of uh, subjects which are related to MSME sector. And uh, I am pretty sure the people who have two, three years experience may not have the complete knowledge of the MSME sector. Uh, so they'll have to do some sort of studying. Some sort of preparation would be required. Uh, both in terms of uh, role of SIDBI, role of banking sector, the MSME sector, the challenges in MSME sector, what is microfinance, how has microfinance developed, what are the challenges, I mean, and general economic uh, topics that are currently uh, in the country. I mean, I feel those would be the topics largely for the group discussion and also interviewed Interviews this year will be um, earlier. If I remember, the interviews were only twenty percent on subject matter and eighty percent on on other areas and general knowledge, your personality, your uh, your strengths and weaknesses. This year, I feel the, the interview will also have almost fifty to sixty percent of questions on subject. Yeah. Because that's the only area that that's the only time they are being able to test that. There's no written exam if that's if that doesn't happen. So that that's that's a very uh, fair point, and I think uh, students can take note of this. That uh, uh, and general aware, general general financial awareness and economic awareness is what I will say is a must both for your interview. How well read you are, how how aware you are about what's going on is very very important. In addition to of course the job profile related. So in the in the earlier sessions, in the earlier rounds, a person can afford to say, "I do not know the difference between a current ratio and a quick ratio," mm -hmm. but this year. A candidate is expected to know what is the difference between a current ratio and a quick ratio. A quick ratio. And I'm sure they should be with two or three years of experience of working in lending. That is something uh, they should have also have a working knowledge of. So, difference between a term loan and working capital. Working capital, is working capital yeah. How working capital is assessed. What are the methods of assessing working capital. These things people should be aware. And I'm sure people who are working in uh, banking, they, are, they have that sort of an experience. But they have to brush up. They have to brush up. That's true. Because many times while working, we forget the terminology, the correct way of telling it. So that, that's why they need to practice, brush up and prepare in that uh, area. So uh, I think uh, that's mostly covering uh, so from my areas. In the end, sir, one question I will ask you. You have worked with Sidby. You're now working with an NDFC in the private sector. Uh, what would you say has been your experience of working both in the public and the private sector? First of all, the first sentence that I made, I owe my career to SIPI. Whatever I am today, professionally and personally, lot of uh, credit goes to the exposure I got in SIPI. Best of the postings, the best of the departments that I worked with. Um, I've also worked with the deputy managing director, I worked in HR, I worked in microfinance, I've headed branch offices, I've headed the biggest branch in India, that is Delhi. So, I've got the best of the exposure. I've got the best of the foreign posting, foreign trainings, foreign assignments as well. And uh, at the ripe age of 49, not many people can take that plunge. I left the government job and joined a private sector. Again, that was uh, incidental only. Because I was not looking to leave city. My wife always tells me that I'm wedded to Sidney. Sidney is my first love and she is the second. So that's how it was. And uh, But there was an opportunity which came across on my lap, in my lap. And here uh, the <coughs> promoters of a very big corporate, they wanted to start an NBSC, a startup NBSC on a fintech model. 
and they were looking for a for a young banker young not so young banker who has that expertise in msme lending and sidbi has also just started uh, the fintech model adopting mm-hmm. the appraisal mechanism in in a way that was slightly different from traditional methods of appraisal so i had some sort of a direct exposure working in sidbi team uh and uh, stakeholder management that was very important i was working with uh, the government of india department of financial services on certain areas then i was also working with the world bank project so uh, so there, those were the two aspects they were these promoters were looking for to start an nbfc who can manage stakeholder management and a fintech background so that challenge came to me to join as a ceo of that company and start an nbfc and i took the challenge and it was luckily in delhi only so there was some sort of a permanency in my uh, career it was a completely different ball game from sidbi sidbi comes from a very structured government owned institution where all policies are written down time tested policies you just you just have to see what is the policy and then move forward right and there are uh, there are areas of uh, improvement development and uh, innovations as well here it was a completely different chat i was given a task that you take over this take charge you develop your team you develop your business you develop your business model you develop your risk strategies you develop your hr strategy so it was like starting my own startup but the money was not mine capital was from, from somewhere else but it was absolutely a startup and uh, now i can say with proud that we are doing almost 1000 crores of business on an annual basis largely into supply chain we also ventured in microfinance and retail business also but we did not have very good experience so we are to supply chain finance basically supply chain finance end to end supply chain finance from very little amount to large amounts and it is paperless uh, completely paperless everything is linked to the enterprise resource uh, management system of the uh, anchor companies and all these small businesses these small borrowers who have very little or limited access to formal financial systems they do not have town loans and working capital we provide them okay great so i think so listening to you i i have found one commonality between both your careers uh, currently and sidbi is there's uh, you know Uh, your there's no lack of enthusiasm i think the way you told about starting your career in kochi uh, at sibbi and the way you told about starting uh, the same bfc like an entrepreneur uh, the excitement and the enthusiasm was absolutely the same so i think you're up for challenges and that's what it was all about <laughs> you know uh, always being up for different different kind of challenges and opportunities i'm sure have never been less for you or for any of the candidates we have to make sure to give more than our 100% and be always ready for any kind of challenge that comes up uh, in our career path yeah and there may be side setbacks also praj i mean course, yeah there is no utopian situation there is no perfect situation anywhere in this world neither in professional nor personal life so there would be setbacks there would be failures as well but having gained experience if i look at a canvas of more than 30 years now everything evens out if there are setbacks there will be successes also but you have to keep working wo arjun ko chidiya ki aankh dikhai deti thi na you have to keep working towards your goal that's it golden words sir and so uh, nicely put out and i think it was a pleasure as always i have talked to you before uh, and always you know some good learning that comes out for me and i'm sh- definitely sure uh you know for candidates even more thank you so much sir for taking out today to talk to us once again and giving the right kind of guidance and path uh, to the aspirants i hope this will help them to take the right decision uh, for their careers and steer it in the right direction thank you prachi thanks to you to i exam b and all the best for the candidates and i'll be more than happy to interact with the candidates whenever whenever there's a requirement Absolutely. So we look forward to your guidance for the interviews and uh, also for the students. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care.